Hello, my name is Mary Panfilo. I'm a character artist working freelance in movies and games. And in these tutorials, I will give some comments about the body I created for this character. And uh, later I will show you the time lapse of how I sculpted it. The finished version looks like this. Uh, so his uh, silhouette and posture is uh, stylized in proportions, the legs and uh, the body itself is uh, shortened. If we count the number of heads uh, that he have, we can do that by selecting the head height and this is, will be the one head, two, three, four, five. So maximum with five head character and the typical real human proportions is 7.5 heads. Definitely exaggerated proportions, uh, but at the same time realistic secondary shape uh, style. I ended up with three measure topology. It is not kind of the topology that you need to do for uh, if you do the character for animation, uh, but if you do it for just a render image, uh, it's not necessary to take this extra technical steps to create everything clean and great. Uh, so I try to go semi-automatic with topology and UVs. I even kept my legs uh, separate from the body because on the top it will be a, a dress, so we want to see the stitch in between. The, there was uh, more parts initially and this is the way how I built the body. I created the head from the sphere, the torso from the sphere also, and arms I created by IMM brush. Uh, I'm in body parts and you can create parts of the body on top of uh, your uh, start and uh, when you're ready you can connect uh, different parts with a bridge brush uh, it's in the modeler and uh, you just select two holes uh, you select uh, hit space select bridge uh, two holes and connect them like that so you you not always need to dynamesh together because sometimes you don't want to dynamesh. Uh, some parts can be destroyed because of that. For example, this close mouse will be destroyed if I dynamesh it. Uh, but instead you can bridge it and uh, topology will be more or less fine. Uh, but if you want, you can mesh it again and it will be even better. So let me show you the all steps and how proportions uh, were changing. Uh, in the process. Sh they was changing a lot. I was looking for a, a good balance in between head and neck, how it looks from the side view, uh, how far I should push uh, the neck forward to be it uh, well combined with the curved uh, spine. And uh, I even think that in some steps uh, on the early stage it was, uh, it was looking better than later. For example, this one I, I really like. Uh, I turn on outline fin to see the silhouette more and uh, judge it uh, without distracting to details too much. Another way I can do that is uh, hit um, a basic material, but with in a lighting palette, I double click to the light and reverse the light. So you can give some silhouette to, uh, to see the shape, but um, all imperfections about details, you won't notice it and it's easier to you to judge are you there or not. In this version I really liked uh, his uh, relation uh, from arms to the torso, how wide the torso is and how tiny the arms is. And the following stages, uh, I think I went into the wrong direction and make uh, the arms bigger. Uh, because uh, when you go to a smaller scale and you worry about smaller shape, sometimes you lose this general silhouette. So I recommend you to go back and sometimes uh, compare your progress with uh, previous versions. And in my tile-ups you will notice that sometimes I do that. I open all their versions and see am I going in the right direction or not. Uh, here's uh, the final version. I tried to find references that um, are the same body type as I do. So I went more into old uh, people and uh, slouch spines. And um, 
the way how the spine curved affects all features that are smaller than the spine, how uh, prominent the scapula and uh, clavicle, and it gives a certain uh, quality to the pectoral muscle and give a certain wrinkles here. Uh, this one is really good because uh, by shadows we see a very prominent uh, shape of the rib cage, how it curves inside going to vertebra. So I really wanted to uh, show this round rib cage shape and how the, the curvature of the spine, a uh, very slouch type, makes it stronger. At the first level you should be really aware about where is your skeleton and how it shapes the, the whole body and only on top of that add other structures. Uh, you can check with uh, Broca image uh, which shows all landmarks of the human body and uh, just uh, to check yourself see if you miss something or not. For example, elbow have uh, three points, uh, the lateral ones are apicandals of the shoulder bone and this third is uh, tip of the elbow which is ulna bone and uh, the ulna bone goes straight uh, to the tip uh, near the palm and um, knowing where the bones are uh, first it gives you a structure and second uh, you are knowing where you should sculpt uh, soft tissues and where you should uh, do more angle shapes near to the wrist there will be more bones and the, the surface of the body is more angular and squarish and you will have a lot uh, square uh, parts but more to the top of the hand you will have more muscles and the surface will be softer. These images I collected for the sculpting foot and it gives me more differences uh, how I can do foot and uh, how far I can go with them. Uh, I like this uh, curved toys so it uh, gives more interesting and more asymmetric effect and I try to go similar way with my foot. So the idea is that the more uh, images like this you collect and use, the more interesting your sculpture will be. I mentioned uh, very often about how important to collect reference and analyze them and go deeper with them. The process of thinking about reference and go deeper and go into books, you spend an extra time to it. So your sculpting is only a part of your lear learning process but you also analyze and go in between uh, learning source and what you do. With uh, each new sculpt I try to expand my knowledge and library and uh, go uh, deeper. So with an example of leg first that you learn is uh, that the leg have a, a what bone it have it have a fibula bone that ends on the side and goes to the inner and this motion of the bone affects the motion of the leg itself it will have uh, this flow then it have a fibula bone and tibia bone you should be uh, mindful of uh, the shape of uh, tibia bone because it's very visible on the surface and how it also goes uh, to the inside and uh, how the tip of it are visible inside here and what shape it have also. The third bone is fibula and uh, it is much smaller um, but you also see it uh, at the bottom and you see how muscle attaches here. So this is the first level and on a bigger scale uh, you are aware of leg narrowing down from the top to the bottom. Uh, it usually have a flow like that, uh, more thick at the top and goes thinner at the bottom because here will be stronger muscles that uh, need to make stronger movements and at the bottom the muscles are weaker uh, because they are dealing with foot and fingers uh, so they don't need to be as much strong as quadriceps muscles. Uh, so the, the majority of mass will be at the top and then it goes thinner and thinner and here will be almost uh, no muscles and uh, there will be more tendons and uh, bones and everything is more angular at the bottom.
On the smaller scale, uh, the next step is to recognize muscle groups and how they attach in relation to the skeleton. So if it will be the, the pelvis, so the quadriceps, one of biggest muscle group connect to iliac crest and goes here and first you are mindful of uh, the general shape of quadriceps muscle and how it connects uh, to on the end and uh, gluteus medius and uh, inner muscles so you recognize this uh, big shape uh, gastronemius and the and the dynamic of its muscles, where is the higher part, where is the lower part. Usually this part of quadriceps, it's it's not usually, it's uh, like a rule that this part of quadriceps is, goes lower than this part. So you have a lot of angularity and uh, you don't uh, find a lot of straight and parallel shapes. Usually there's uh, a lot of angles and a lot of uh, shift of masses. When you're learning it, you try to relate stylized anatomical images like Bridgman images and try to find uh, some rules here, uh, some uh, try to see this uh, shifts and see this asymmetry of uh, the leg. And uh, you try to relate it with, uh, for example, 3D scan reference and uh, try to find the same uh, principles that was shown in uh, anatomical images and find uh, the same structures here. And on a smaller scale you go closer and within a mus big muscle group you try to distinct smaller shapes. So with this one uh, you can go deeper and learn uh, what uh, individual muscles the lower leg have and where they start and where they connect and according to that you sculpt a particular um, muscle tendons and you should know exactly where this uh, for example uh, tibialis anterior muscle uh, where it leads and uh, leads exactly the same way as you learned from the anatomy source and on top of all that you add a lot of veins and small wrinkles and uh, pores and a lot of imperfections that make your uh, shapes more organic and random and more realistic. Especially for old people so there can be a lot of bumps, uh, so you can do something like that. Veins are always good and always improve uh, the look of the sculpture. So it's all my short things I find important for body sculpting. Enjoy the time lapse and happy the brushing.